Have you ever thought gravity was just too easy to hold yourself up under? Have you ever craved the forbidden heat signature? Have you ever been granted access to a jet that costs roughly the same as the Alaskan purchase just for you to goof up the Harrier liftoff and send it straight into the sea? Well, do I have the game for you? VTOL VR. VTOL, standing for uh, vertical takeoff and landing. Most of your takeoffs and landings are going to be horizontal. Uh... VTOL VR is a game about taking your joint task force air liberation, air conservation, modern army aircraft flight, and receive lucky throwing all forms of rationality out of the window and doing a bombing run on an airfield upside down 40 feet from sea level. In this game, you play as John Bond, a survivor from the shattered, dystopian lands of Kansas, and are tasked with raising entire military bases with training that consists of a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator 1998, as well as two hours of studying DCS forum arguments. That may not sound fantastic, but luckily you're safe from the loving hands of defense contractors, seeking cluster missiles, magical radar detection devices and Google Maps that relay exactly what your teammates are doing are all at your disposal and you're going to need them. This game is completely deranged, but hey, that's an A- minus for a flight sim. So get flying and remember kids, the Brigadier General knows best. Here we have the cockpit. It's not terrible. Right panel for starting the plane and your canopy. Right dashboard for calm slash yelling at your teammates. Left panel for landing and takeoff things. Left dashboard for autopilot, keep it on. Lights, refueling and unrefueling. And custom and portable MP3 files. <laughs> Middle panel for your instruments like compasses and altimeters, throwing things off the jet and radar. Upper dashboard for autopilot instructions. You have four screens on the aircraft that you can navigate by pressing the corresponding buttons. Top two control your radar detecting and missile launch detecting thing as well as fuel reserve display. Bottom two for everything. Radar, maps, customizing weapons, customizing flares, targeting system, the IP addresses of your teammates to leak if they get too pushy, it's everything. Then there's the bobblehead and the big yellow rocket seat initiator. Don't pull that one. Don't pull that. Now that you're just as confused as when we started, you can go ahead and translate this knowledge to all the aircraft in the game, except for the F-35, and in which trying to figure out you will promptly have an aneurysm. Understood, gonna start out this thing now. Close the canopy, hit the main battery button to turn on the thing, hit APU, which is essentially the engine kickstarter. Wait a minute. Start the engines. Turn on the HUD to put a whole lot of numbers in your face when you see through the glass pane. Hit the whatever this stands for to glue that glass pane to your face with your visor up. Hit the right arm before takeoff because it emits non-ionizing radiation everywhere around you, and that isn't covered under the insurance plan for the airbase workers. Turn off the brakes, unfurl the wing fold if needed, contact tower for taxi instructions, disregard that, and immediately hit a fat drift onto the runway, crash into your AWACS who is also taking off, and explode. Okay, when you get off the ground, you can turn off the APU and tuck in your landing gear. Do we need the canopy? If you look around you, you'll see your wingmen. They're good at maintaining form flight with you, somehow matching your bone-crushing hygiene maneuvers perfectly, but aren't great for much else. See, the hostile AA missile launchers may seem like a big threat due to the ridiculously strong tracking, and how a single missile will probably dent up your wings or engine enough to kill you, but it's actually due to how seeing these things being fired at them will cause your wingmen to forget they're flying a jet and think they're flying a missile, like a baby bird and printing on the first thing it sees. This will cause them to ditch everything they're doing and fly into the ground, getting Swiss cheesed by a sea whiz on the Way. And you do not get reinforcements, no. What takes off with you is what you have, and when they die, you have to finish the mission yourself. So that's great, but what allows you to finish your mission yourself? Your weaponry. You moron. You've got your unguided miniguns, rockets and bombs, basic guided heat-seeking missiles that dart towards anything emitting large amounts of heat, like jet engines or the sun, radar guided and anti-radar missiles you use with aircraft screens, laser and optically guided munitions that you use with a camera, rockets converted to missiles stored in 19 per cylinder, autocannons on gimbals that shoot whatever you look at, and bombs and cruise missiles that you use by marking a GPS target. Although, personally I like to take a more eastern approach. If you haven't sacrificed your life for the Glorious Emperor, however, you have to land it. Say we need to land on a carrier. These can be tough, so here's an example. In this, I'm coming at the carrier at 450 knots. In the business, this is known as a rapid landing. I don't need to deploy the landing gear or hook since I'm experienced, and this can wear down the aircraft systems. When I approach, I use a Cobra maneuver to slow the down just enough to make sure the land- 
That is what a mission's like, and considering my brain matter has completely dissolved and is simply pooling in my thick skull, I cannot think of a segue out of here, so... Out of your friends, which are you? Truck freak crazy ass! The fire. The AV-42 is the easiest explosion-powered flying rock. It's a Harrier, so landing is a breeze and can mount a Galway Avenger somehow. You know, the... Forty-five friendly fire incidents? Those are rookie numbers! The F-18 is a boring one and does nothing cool. Except for the 98 Hydras you can mount. Jesus hamburger Christ, y'all got any wrist rockets? The F-35 is the fanciest flying piece of metal that yells at you in the game. Equipped with a military issue identity crisis that allows it to go straight up like a friggin' hummingbird and a full RGB gamer setup with Discord integration. For DLC, you have the AH-64 helicopter, the most built different aircraft in the game with head tracking cannons. Blows up pancakes with mine. My fucking pain. A bail button with a 100% mortality rate, even while on the ground, and the dumb idiot retreating blade stall lot decided that it'll simply decide to constantly roll right, forcing you to always be alert of where you're tilting while not on hover mode. But I mean, helicopters have clobbered the entire concept of physics to be able to fly, so give them a break. Then, the FA-50, shut up, is a two-person standard jet with the load capacity of a carrier pigeon. Good way to get friends into the game. Look, Bamudo, I know you need to fund your horse tranquilizer addiction somehow, but I'm not buying a worse version of an already existing plane when I could simply screech at the newcomers until they learn how to die more efficiently in their own jet. Twice the jets mean twice the wasted tax dollars, twice as many budget cuts to public infrastructure, and twice as many potholes. As God's deputy in causing traffic and inconveniencing Minnesotans, it works out fine for me. Where am I? Oh yes, the plot. Kinda? The Harrier campaign takes place on an island in the middle of nowhere that also happens to be excruciatingly important somehow. In the first mission, all you do is pick up and drop off the four Polygon homies to their joint task force dance recital. You don't even have a gun yet. In the second mission, we have to blow up a few boats. For purchasing munitions, you are given a generous $8 and an Iron Man Funko Pub. Yeah, that's very good resale value. In the next mission, we have to escort a lost pilot back to our carrier. You may be wondering how he managed to get lost in full view of the island with a friendly airbase, but I'm assuming it had to do with the wingman and printing phenomenon. Poor guy probably got a glimpse of a seagull and couldn't figure it out from there. After we do whatever that was, we start the next one watching our carrier fleet take its revenge on those godless birds by firing TLS missiles at them. Cool, time to fight the enemies. Do you know how to perfectly dodge seven missiles simultaneously? No? Shame. After that well play tested, perfectly balanced engagement, Command tells us we've lost contact with the island. In the next mission, we take off with the carrier to join up with some carrier-based aircraft who are aerial refueling before checking out the island. Why couldn't they just refuel on the carrier like we did? Well, to that I retort. Shut up. As they're doing that, something on the island starts to lock onto us and no one cares, that's just fine, it does that until we realize the entire enemy military has completely taken over in five minutes, who could have predicted that? We head back under night time to go try to blow up their missile cruiser and have a mental breakdown trying to figure out how AGM 89s work. Excellent, time to take the fight to the enemy's main fleet. With two of our own and all the jets in our arsenal, they're painted for death and paint is friggin' delicious! This mission contains taking back the airbase, fighting off drone boats, and blowing up the enemy's fleet. Except. Once you're done with that, that was a weaker fleet. You have to blow up the enemy aircraft carrier, and all of your teammates are dead. Fortunately, your own friendly aircraft carrier is moving in, and its destroyer fleet has an infinite stock of missiles they are blind firing in the general direction of them. So remember kids, when the odds are against you, and the challenge is insurmountable, get someone with an infinite stock of missiles to do it. Beyond that, the game has one other campaign with the F-18, which is longer, more boring, and I don't have the time for it in this video and a couple of scenarios which isn't that much, but it does have a custom map and mission editor in the Steam Workshop anyone can post things to. Missions, entire campaigns, and custom paint jobs for your aircraft. Which was a mistake. I assure you, Tower, the Among Us livery is not only radar absorbent, but perfect for identification. You will very easily know I won't be sus. And on a similar note, my intoxication does not affect my ability to operate vehicles of any kind, jet, or car. God gives his toughest commutes to his drunkest drivers, and that's why I can- that's- that's why I can- I can- Additionally, the game has a beta multiplayer mode, and it's great. 
Instead of one enraged sociopath constantly ripping 23 Gs and compressing his ribcage into carbon, you can have as many as it takes to do whatever it takes. For multiplayer types, you've got linear PvE missions, sandbox-style PvE missions, free flights, formation flights, beta male missile PvP, alpha male guns only PvP, and the ultra-ascended Sigma Bale unguided rockets only helicopter Thunderdome. And uh, that's all there is to it. I mean, there's still content being added, like a new plane coming out with crucial elements of the modern battlefield which have not been represented yet. Probably gonna be an F-22 with thrust vectoring, but you didn't hear that from me. Overall, I give it a 7 obliterated Yemen children out of 10. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Looks like you can't keep flying this thing for much longer. Mr. Bongo, I think it's time to find out what that big yellow lever does.